Hey, what is up you guys? I'm James James Jept House. Today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at all my breeder leopard geckos. This is part two to the leopard gecko collection tour. Now, in today's video, we're gonna look at all the breeders, all the animals that are possibly gonna breed this year. Some are a little small. I wanna wait and see them grow up a little bit more, uh, but we will be looking at all of them. That includes all like eight or nine of my males and like 20 something females, up, up to 27 ish, something like that. So if you guys are excited for this video, make sure to leave a like, comment what your favorite gecko is and your favorite pairing that you're excited for. Cause I'm gonna go over the male, I'm gonna go over the males and then each female he's paired with in order. So let's get started and have some fun while we do it, shall we? All right, so first up, I have this male. This is a super snow. Um, and to be honest with you guys, I'm not 100% sure what kind of snow it is. All the babies that come out are going to be sold as snows, uh, pet quality snows. I do have Malloy. You can't see him. I do have Malloy, and I cleaned this tub literally like an hour ago. I do have Malloy as a backup. I know he is a snow of some sort. This is actually his son. So this super snow is going to go to all three of these geckos. So we have a normal and two tug snows lefty and righty. So I'm just going to make a bunch of snows. This is kind of like, I had a couple extra spots. I didn't want to make a bunch more black nights that were just had everything and not very dark. So I said, well, I can make snows something easy. I can throw on the table if I'm at, if I'm at Trent's table or whatever. If you guys don't know Trent, Gek Bro. Uh, but let's move on. Of course, he's underneath his paper towel. Where you at, buddy? This guy is a super snow radar, or a super radar, if you will, and he is going to be paired to four. So this girl and this girl, he was two last year, and these guys are white and yellow uh, radar and a white and yellow snow bell head eclipse. Um, and now he is also paired to two of their children, which if you look closely, that one looks just like the mom, except that one's a super snow. This one looks just like the dad, except this one's a white and yellow. So these are both uh, super snows, super snow radars. Uh, I believe, actually, I believe that one's white and yellow. This one's not. I think that's what the pattern difference is. Uh, very hard to tell with these animals, especially when you take a lot of the color and pattern away. You start getting slight differences. Now, this next project is got to be... Well, there's two I'm super excited for. This has to be one of them, though. So this is Apex, the Max Snow Black Knight Eclipse. And he will be paired to his granddaughter, the Max Snow Black Knight Eclipse, who looks just like him. Look at that. I've already got a waiting list on these, just so everyone knows. I've got a, I've, there's, there's only a couple people, but I have a waiting list. Uh, this girl he bred to last year, Super, ugh, pardon me, Super Snow Black Knight, Double Head Blizzard Eclipse. And some more eclipses, posset. Oh, I'm sorry, not Blizzard, Patterless. I originally had thought the female I originally paired him to was Blizzard, that's what I was told. Uh, and upon proving it out, she was Patterless. So everything I have that's Black Knight, most of it is either Head Eclipse or Posset Eclipse Patterless. Um, so three more females he's paired with Black Knight, Head Eclipse. Super Snow Black Knight Eclipse. Really awesome looking gecko. I'm excited for this pairing. I know she's not super dark, but I'm very excited. And then a Black Knight Eclipse, which is his daughter from a couple years ago from a buddy of mine. So we're splitting that project up. Um, and you can see him eating. I love to watch him eat, especially right before breeding season. I don't want to scare him too much. But he breeds like crazy. So it's something I talked about on our podcast. Our podcast is Rep Talk. That's on my buddy, uh, Gek Bro, Trent. It's on his YouTube channel. Uh, we just started. If you want to go subscribe to him and check out a podcast, I appreciate that. The more viewers we get, the more the better I feel about it. Because I know he, he's taking it very seriously. And I'm like, oh, there's only 20 people watching. But it's something we're doing. It's something we're trying out. Uh, so go support us there. Uh, so last year, I bred him to, I think, four or five females. And he breeds like crazy. He stops eating. He gets extremely thin. I always worry he's going to die. Uh, but then I, I, but you know, I can't take him out cause he won't eat. He just wants to breed. So like if I put him to like two or three females, it's not going to matter. He's just going to not eat anyway. So I put him to five, uh, 
Of course, I'm always worried that he's going to die during breeding season. I'm hoping to get uh, him with this girl. I will make probably close to half of them males um, for myself because I want to pick out a male. So they should theoretically all look the same. Um... Uh, but I need a new male. That's not going to do that. I need a stronger male. So this is the visual. Now this is a 50% Black Knight double visual uh, powerless uh, eclipse sight tail kink. Uh, so it's very, very faint. It's not dark at all, right? Uh, so that one's just on the size of breeding, just barely. Honestly, it might wait a week or two. And it's going to these two Super Snow double heads, which bred last year and then this is the same thing double het and this is the same thing super snow except this is a really dark super snow so if i keep any double visuals back or maybe something that's you know i'm probably only going to keep double nah, okay so here's here's my thing that's a double visual and these are all double het so if anything comes out eclipse it's automatically past head pat or head paddleless, 100% head paddleless. If anything comes out paddleless, it's automatically head eclipse. So if it comes out neither, it's double head. So what I'm thinking is these, I had to get water, I was dying. These three geckos are going to be like a normal, like 20% or 25% females. I'm sorry, 20, 25% males roughly. Cause these will probably all get sold. I probably won't keep any of these this one will obviously they're not going to be that when they come out right this to that i mean they might look like that one a little bit darker so this one's going to be 50 percent males and i probably will keep everything back from this project pick out a really dark double visual male or one that i know is you know is at least one of the visuals probably i'm gonna i'm shooting for a double visual the male, you really want the double visual. So I'll keep a double visual male back. Um, he'll probably be with this one again. And any of like the three darkest females that I produce, whether they're double visuals or not, will go back to the same male. Um, and then anything else is extra. And then from there, we just, we line breed the, we, we make sure that we start getting all the double visuals. We keep back all the double visuals and we also get it darker, which is what we did here. We isolated the eclipse. Um, and then we got it darker and here it is. That's the same thing. We want the Eclipse powerless in this group and we want it darker. So this group, a lot, this female specifically, not head powerless. I specifically wanted separate lions. Now that's where the yellow comes in, right? The yellow is also not head powerless. I kept that out of the group. So this is the male that bred last year. Um, and this is the one that's going to replace it when it's bigger. It'll probably only be at the end of the season, but if I get... A couple clutches from this male, I'll be happy just because he is a slight amount darker. He's only, he's like 15, 20% darker. That's enough to really make a big difference in price of babies. I can make a baby from, you know, 150, 200 to 300 to 400. So that's what we're going for. And before I move on any further, this one that's the double visual, I want to show you guys. This is the one that bred last year that was also double head eclipse or double head Powerless Eclipse that bred to all these double head Powerless Eclipse females. So we got a couple, we got a bunch of visual eclipses from it that are pos head Powerless. And we only got two visual Powerless and that's one of them. So that's where we're headed with that. But here we have, so we have the male Black Knight Eclipse who will be replaced with that darker one. This female bred last year. Uh, she says she's visual Eclipse. I was an idiot. I think she's het. I let me just double check that real quick. Yep, just a het, which is fine. That means everything's either gonna be Black Knight Eclipse or uh, Head Eclipse. This girl, very dark. I know who the mom is. She is het patternless head eclipse. I don't know why I put that in there. Head patternless head eclipse. That was kind of stupid. So we might make some uh, eclipses, but everything's gonna be pos head patternless. That's kind of stupid on my part. I don't. I should have done that. Probably too late. Probably not going to do anything about it. Um, I will keep an eye on the babies. None's going to come out patternless. Um, and I guess, well, they might. That would prove out if something was head patternless on accident that wasn't supposed to be. Um, but this animal is kind of dark. So this, especially with that second male, can make some dark animals 
I don't know if you guys were looking. I was looking with my eyes and not with the camera, and I noticed you guys couldn't see. So here are two more. Another visual eclipse. Not super dark on that one, but this head eclipse does have some nice dark pattern. So uh, realistically, it would have been nice to have a, an animal like her in this project. Um, honestly, she she should have been in this project, but I wanted to make sure she bred with dad so we got more that were that black. And we're, you know, I produced like two or three of these this year. I sold two of them. I, I was so stupid. I should have kept one. Um, that's the problem. <laughs> I needed the money, uh, but it is what it is. Okay, so I do have a male. So let's take a look. This is the male that's breeding. This is the male that I want to breed if it's big enough by the end of the season. Who knows? If it's like 35 grams by the end of the season, I'll pair him a couple times. I have a male that looks just like her, except he's super snow. And actually, I think, he, I think he's super snow. I don't remember off the top of my head. And I didn't realize I could use him for that project and I sold him. Now the person has a down payment and I have a line of people that want to buy him if she falls through. If she falls through, I am keeping him and he's going to replace that male. Because if, if like a gecko like that bred to these, like they're not going to all be pitch black, but that's a lot more money than like this slightly dark one, right? Um, so that's, that's the goal. The darker, the more money. The more money, the better, because then I can get more geckos and more racks and quit my day job. Moving on, because that's kind of a lot to take in. I know I talk a lot, um, and a lot of this doesn't make sense to a lot of people who don't understand the genetics, but if you watch enough videos, if you do enough research, everything will start to piece together. And once you start working with animals, it'll piece together. Start with something simple. Breed an albino, felt like a bell albino to like a het bell albino or something. And you'll start seeing the odds in person, and that's when it really clicks. This is a tangerine tornado, which is a line bread trait. And he, I got from my buddy Dave along with this female. Bred last year. Awesome. Love those guys. She she had some good eggs. Not a, not a ton, a ton. And then here are two of their babies. This one has a paradox spot on the cheek. This one's super deep. Uh, super deep orange. I can't wait to have more of these babies. You guys remember last year I have this female and like a wholesale hypo female. Um, these two are both from her. I made sure of that. They Those babies came out quite a bit darker orange. Um, so that's what I'm really excited for also and I am going to make a higher percentage of males one thing I noticed this year is I'm I ended up with like eight females left over and everyone keeps asking me for male tantering tornadoes so this next season uh, I'll probably end up making like 50% male 50% female next up we have this radar which I believe I'm dropping things I, I I put this single cup up here, and I'm like, I'm going to knock that over eventually. Right there. Um, I believe he was from a white and yellow radar group, and, I mean, honestly, he could be white and yellow. I don't know. Um, but that's my male radar. And I traded a couple of gargoyle babies for, these, for a couple of these geckos. And here is a radar female. She is nothing too crazy. Um, kind of light for a radar. But radars are awesome. I think it adds a little variety. I do like doing the Black Knights. I don't want to do 100% Black Knights. One, it gets confusing. I like to kind of separate them a little bit. Um, it just makes the, collecting the eggs easier and marking them so I have less likely to make a mistake. Um, and like when my buddy Trent, that I do the podcast with, when he does an expo and I want to go with him, I can throw a couple things on the table. And if I sell $100 worth, well, shoot, that pays for my gas to go to the expo, right? This is a blood bell. Not super dark. I do love the ring around the eyes. I, this is also a pair I traded some gargoyle babies for. And that's not even the right female. Oh, that's right. Okay, so we're talking about the radar. I forgot about this female. I recently just uh, traded a baby radar for this uh, blizzard female and so basically what the goal is is breed this radar or breed this blizzard to the radar um, then everything will be het for uh, I believe it's white knight I always get those two confused it's Diablo Blanca or white knight whichever one's for Bellow by now everything will be het that and I'll breed two of them together honestly what I'll probably do is I'll make a lot of females 
and keep keep like three females back and then just buy a male and that way instead of the next year like trying to get trying to hit a one in 32 odds just to get the double just get a single double visual and the next year making more um i can just make them right off the bat and make a bunch more money it's more costly up front to do something like that to buy visuals but it'll save you years of work and start making you money sooner so on a project like this where the double the triple visual the the white knight or diablo blanc or whatever it is on that project where the male is 300 or something he'll probably be around 300 dollars it'll that 300 dollars will probably make me you know an extra thousand the next year that i wouldn't have made so back to the blood bell i was so confused when i opened that it wasn't blood bell back to the blood bell here is her. I fed her two hours ago and she is crazy. They always tip their water. They always tip their food. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned is these females. This, this whole rack is all females. That's the last female, by the way. The last tub is empty. This whole rack is all females. This is males over here. It's the same footprint, actually male footprint. The footprint on the tub for the male is a little bit bigger just because it doesn't have the rounded corners like these do. Um, I use these deeper tubs for females just so I can fit a lay box in there. The males don't need the height. Uh, so what will happen is the, the first male with the red tape will come in. He'll go in here for a couple days. Probably the first, the first roundabout, he'll probably go in here for a day or two, probably here for a day or two, and then here for a day or two. Depending on how I feel about each male, he might come out um, and go back in his home for a little bit. And once he's ran through all three of those, He'll go back in his home for a couple days. He'll pull him back out. Day or two, day or two, day or two. Go back home. Um, and they don't eat a whole lot while they're breeding. That's why I'm trying to fatten them up. Like I said, I also feed them lots of doobie at this time. That's kind of the reason I started that big doobie colony. But <clears throat> I make sure they always have food whether they want it or not. The females are laying eggs. They need all that nutrients they can get. They need lots of calcium. Um, for someone like apex the black knight who's going to five females i might only run them for a day in each one and then take them out and then maybe do like two for two days each take them out three for two days each take them out and see what happens so someone like apex i might might take him out a little bit sooner he might not stay in for like a two full two or three days just so i don't risk him dying he is a very nice expensive animal and you never want animals to die um in in any case in terms of expanding next year, I honestly have no idea, you guys. I know a lot of people want to do leopard gecko trades with me. Um, and I definitely want more leopard geckos. The problem is the space. So I'm in my reptile room, right? This is all just junk on the floor. I've been moving around. Got my computer desk there. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to really add any more animals i know i know i've done this i've talked about this in other videos and it's not a leopard gecko specific thing but this area is all crested geckos this space is all going to be used by crested geckos and i'm assuming either this year or next year i will start to fill that up a little bit more maybe only like one group at a time but it will happen <sighs> vietnamese blue beauty vietnamese blue beauty i have two more babies raising up she already needs a bigger tub he probably needs a bigger tank um and i'm not 100 percent sure where i'm gonna put that yet steve the ball python i'm not sure where he, he's chilling right now but you know eventually he's really old he's eventually not going to be with us he does shake uh when he's looking for his prey at this point um so i i don't know he i don't expect him to live too much longer um in which case you know maybe the blue beauties will go somewhere one thing i could do that i kind of don't want to do is get another rack similar to this and put it up but I probably probably would be too tall. I'm not sure. I know I need two more of these, which will probably go where Steve is. It's 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 a big puzzle. Um, I have the palmettos growing up, so really what I want to do is keep doing what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna save a little bit of money this year, and on top of that, um, you know I'm gonna keep upgrading these, make sure the dark the black nights get darker, so that way next year I make even more money, and then we can. Uh, you know, start considering either a house, uh, which would be awesome. Then I could have, you know, like a whole garage or, um, you know, like a bigger room or a, like a living room full of reptiles 
or what I would more likely prefer. I don't really want the reptiles in my living room because then it's hard to do these videos. What I would more likely prefer is, you know, maybe we go rent a commercial space and uh, who knows, we can do something where like people sit with the animals or it can be a pet shop or something. We don't have actually a reptile store in town. We have like a Petco and a tractor feed supply, but I think it'd be cool to have a reptile store in town. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be it for today's video. I am James Chip Towns. Like I said, make sure to comment which pairing you're most excited for down below. Uh, if you have any ideas for future videos, I'd love to hear them. Like I said, I see these geckos every day, so I don't know exactly what's as exciting to you guys as it is to me. I see these geckos every day, they get boring. Not that they're boring, they get... I, I'm used to seeing them. So comment what you what your favorite pairing is. If you want to get on a list for something, let me know. Not everything has a list, some of them do. Uh, make sure to check out our podcast, it's called Rep Talk. It's over on my buddy Geck Bros YouTube channel, his name's Trent. Um, I think we have like four episodes, it's not very, it's not very good. Uh, we're trying to get a better restructuring a little bit. Um, we're looking for sponsors for that. Like I said, we're only getting like 20 views. I'm actually looking currently for a sponsor for my channel. Uh, so if you're uh, like a reptile person, you either make a product related to reptiles or maybe you just have a product in general and you want to send me one, um, honestly, I'd be down to work with you guys. Uh, I can shout it out on the channel for some free product, whatever happens to work. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate you guys and have a good one. Peace out.